Hey, uh, guys, if you guys seriously want to learn to get better at poker, I mean, maybe you all are way ahead of me. I don't know. I don't want to make this sound like I'm some arrogant douchebag that thinks he's God's gift to poker. I'm not. But what I know is that I've put a ton of work into this game through the past decade or more. And uh, I love explaining DFS to people. I love explaining poker to people. If there's anything that I feel like I might know or have put more work into than maybe the average Joe, um, I'm an open book. I'll share it. Um, I'm going to use some other sites. I don't know if these are premium sites or not. I don't pay for anything uh, that I know of uh, outside of maybe one-time purchases. So some of this stuff, I'll try and tell you if I remember paying for it or not. But this is just the website, uh, redchippoker.com. And it's got, if you type in this address, the infographic preflop ranges, you'll pull up this piece of uh, graphic. And this is great. I used to work on my opening ranges, on my calling ranges, on everything else, because the main mistake poker players make, especially at the casinos, is they call, they get into too many pots with too many marginal hands that they can't fold later on because it's just good enough to keep them around and it costs them a lot of money. So if you can stay, your number one rule, if you're either relatively new to poker or uh, don't maybe have the confidence is to play tighter than the average guy. Don't get into the pot. It's boring. It sucks. Um, sitting there folding, going two or three orbits around the table, you know, when the dealer button passes through you two or three times and you haven't played a hand yet, it's, that sucks. But discipline is very important, just like DFS. Discipline is very, very important. And what you're going to want to see uh, is that when a guy calls you, you've usually got him beat or dominated. He, he That way he ends up paying you off more. You don't have as much thinking, as much analyzing to do. And you can save that analysis for when it matters down the road. And we'll learn all of that stuff if you guys want to discuss it. I mean, jeez, we're uh, open book, man. Um, typically, another thing that people need to learn is position. Uh, being on the dealer button or the seat next to it, the cutoff, is very, very important because you're last to act uh, post-flop, and that lets you see all the action unfold in front of you before you have to decide what you're going to do. Sometimes that changes your game plan entirely, um, and it's important to be there. You're going to make more money from these spots than you will from up front, so you should play a much tighter opening range early on. And using this chart, you can see here that these hands are the hands that you're pretty much raising and calling with. And we'll maybe go through these in more detail. But just to be very, very crude at first, early position is pretty much everywhere except for the cutoff and the button uh, at this stage of your game, most likely. I don't care if there's 10 people sitting at the table. The first, you know, you're sitting the, the big blinds to your right, and you're one of, say, the first six seats. Play tight because it's very likely that you're going to get called if you raise or even if you limp in, you're going to get called by somebody to your left that has position on you for the rest of the hand, and that puts you at a disadvantage. So, I mean, now not with certain hands, you know, pocket aces, pocket kings, ace 10. I mean, these are still pretty good hands uh, to, to play out of position even because when they flop well, they flop strong enough that you can continue to kind of put some money in the pot, and usually you're pretty safe in doing so. So what we're trying to do is kind of keep our opponents guessing. We're going to play the big stuff, of course. Notice that king-queen offsuit is not in here. These are the suited hands up here. These are the offsuited hands down here, um, and the diagonal line is the pocket pairs. But what you're looking at is these hands obviously can't make flushes, so there's a little bit of an additional value over here. Plus, there are 16 combinations of any King-10 offsuit, whereas there are only four combinations of King-10 suited. So by playing typically only the suited varieties, it's keeping you down to about 25% of what you'd be playing if you're playing everything. And that number alone tightens you up enough that it kind of keeps you out of more out of trouble spots more often than if you were just getting in there every time you had. King 10 in your hand. So um, hopefully that explains a little bit to you right there. But um, what you're looking to do is stay kind of in those uh, Broadway cards, the picture cards, you know, things with a 10 kicker or better. And you're wanting to stay on the suited side of things. You may open up the aces if you want to. Uh, the reason ace five is red here is because 
you know, the A6, A7, A6, they don't make straights. Ace five can make a straight using both cards. So can ace four, ace, you know, three, ace two. But the ace five, you know, pick ace four. It doesn't matter much, but don't pick the ace six because it can't make the straight with using both cards. That's why these don't really get raised as much. And sometimes when somebody, you know, I don't want you to think I have ace king every time I raise. So I'll do it some with a weaker ace just in case I get to show that down and you look at that and go, oh man, he does that with all the suit. No, I don't do it with all of them, but I do do it with some of the weaker ones just to show you what I'm capable of because that keeps you guessing. And when you keep guessing, just like DFS, when you're guessing about Russell Westbrook or James Harden or whatever, you're prone to make mistakes. So if you're guessing about what cards I'm playing, you're prone to make a mistake against me when I do have really, really good cards because you're thinking that I have a possibility of playing some bad cards and you're not taking me as seriously as you otherwise should. Um, so as we are starting off early, early, early in the action preflop, we want to be on a pretty tight range, not a lot of hands. And then as we get towards the, the dealer button, we want to open up some. So we add these in and then we can add these in on the button. Look at how much different the dealer button is from the cutoff it, it's added in jack seven ten seven whatever now personally i don't play a lot of these hands i don't play this entire hey uh, sorry about that i had to cut that off because my wife is home she's a school teacher she was coming in the room talking on the phone with her conference calls and whatnot too so um either way we're only going to do this for another three or four minutes and then we'll we'll get out of here but the idea of i don't play this entire range of cards at all because some of these are too loose for even me and my taste right now um, again trying to stay on the tighter side of things to keep me in the best position until maybe my hand reading skills get better down the road um, so that I like king seven suited I'm probably not playing that you know queen five suited I'm probably not playing that now queen nine suited I will play the way you read this graph if you're looking at it is the green yellow and red i mean the tight razor loose razor whatever that's pretty self-explanatory up here but the three bet call in the raise range the way you're looking at this is if you're on the button and it folds around to you any colored hand on here is an open raise for you okay raise them all if there is a raise in front of you say a guy in early position raised the pot then you're not going to continue on with the green hands you won't call a raise with queen six suited you will call it with the yellow hands, all the pocket pairs, some of the suited connectors, you know, nine, eight, seven, eight suited, whatever, king, jack suited, whatever. Notice again how skewed it is towards the suited versus the off suited hands. You want that little bit of additional uh, power in being able to draw to flush um, as opposed to only a straight. You want, you know, you've got the ability to draw to a flush and a straight with these cards. So it gives you that, you know, I don't know what it is about 2% extra equity in the, in the hand. But these are the hands that you're going to want to call that raise with. And then these three red hands are the ones that you might three bet. You might re-raise. You know, somebody raises and then it gets around to me and I re-raise. You know, you raise it to 200 chips and I re-raise it to 450 or 500 or whatever. We can talk about different sizes. We can talk about all of that kind of stuff as we go. But what I'm learning to do myself is, first of all, memorize these ranges and stick to them as closely as you possibly can. It's going to keep you in the best spot possible. The, and understand why we're using some of these weaker cards along with some of these stronger cards because we're trying to balance that range and keep our opponent guessing at what we have so that they don't know when the board comes out 8, 9, 10. They don't know. Does he? I mean, if you're a very, very tight player and you're only raising aces, ace, king, king, queen type stuff, the board comes out 8, 9, 10. I know I own you because I know you can't possibly have any of that. Um, but if I don't know that because you play 5-7 suited or whatever down in there too, you, I have to at least account for the possibility that you have that in there too. It makes you tougher to play against, which means it allows you to bluff a little bit more and get away with it. Or it allows you to, uh, when you do have it, bet for pure value where you just hope you get called a little bit more often because of that. So very generic advice there. The next thing that I will do is take you to... Uh, this poker stove is free. This is a equity calculator that if I plug in aces for my hand and then say that my opponent has, you know, he typically calls with about, say, I don't know, 20% of his range. 
then it allows that fills that in and that allows me to then say how do my aces do 85 percent of the time they win okay the other thing i can do i can change this and i can say well obviously he would have re-raised aces and kings and maybe ace king uh, maybe even ace queen suited okay now how does that work now how does my equity change you know 85 percent still so not you know, it doesn't change a lot, but when you play with these ranges a little bit and you, you know, maybe my range is not just ace king, you know, maybe mine is those four. Well, how does, how does that work now? Because, oh, because of the ace kings drops to 70%. So I'm still a big favorite, 70, 30, but I'm not as big as I was at 85, 15. So this is teaching you situations. You can plug in specific board cards. You know, you want jack, 10, nine with two hearts on it and then see how his range flops against this. Obviously, it's better. He's actually the favorite in the hand now because you're so focused on those over cards, which is why I was saying you should have some of these middling cards in your range as well when you're raising so that when the board comes out like this, your opponent thinks that it's possible you could have some of that. If you're only on this tight of a range up top, then they know this doesn't help you at all, and they can exploit you. So that's a neat thing to play with. Uh, when you want to go, say, five ways in a hand, you can scroll over. You know, this guy calls with, say, 30% of his hands. This guy calls with, he's a little tighter, maybe, you know, 15, 16% of his hands. And this guy, my God, they all limped into this damn pot. This guy's way wide. He plays 50% of his hands or more. Now, how does my range fare? Whoops, got to take that board out of there. Now, how does my range fare against that? Well, not well. These guys' odds are the more people are in a hand, the less your chances are of winning the hand. You may still have at five people, you may still have more than, say, 20% equity in the hand, uh, which means that just you know, you're going to win more than one out of five times, but your range might not be that good. So what you're really looking for is to narrow the field. That's why you raise preflop, is you don't want to go in there with three, four, five other guys. You want to go in there one-on-one -on -one or maybe two-on-one -on -one at worst because that's what's going to help you the most. So focus on these ranges here. Try to memorize and learn these ranges in this chart and see what it's telling you. And then kind of pay attention to when I should call a raise or when I should fold or when I, and this doesn't work for tournaments. Don't get me wrong. It doesn't necessarily work for tournaments. Tournament situations are different because of your short stacks and your chip size and your blinds being a really, we can talk about all that too. This is just kind of like for cash games if you went to play one, two, no limit at the casino. Um, but focus on playing a tighter range if you can in the, in the beginning while you're learning. And then focus on trying to get that pot down to one or two opponents only, not four or five or six. I mean, that's a general generic guideline to start from. And then we can open up Pandora's box and keep going and keep going and keep going down the road um, if you want to talk more and more about poker. This is a free site. This uh, poker stove is free software to download. This other Flopzilla is a paid uh, one and another thing that you can do I this ignition poker I play on it only because I've you know I don't know what I put 20 bucks 25 bucks in there a couple of years ago I don't care to ever get that money back I'm using it for practice and you know you can grind your 25 bucks up to I think I'm sitting at 125 bucks or so now because I'm just playing those little five dollar tables and I'm using it to drive these ranges home to keep it's like it's like a pitcher if you're a pitcher you have to keep pitching you have to keep tossing your curveball you have to keep throwing your fastball to keep the muscle memory sharp so that when it's game time you are kind of tuned up you're kind of ready to roll playing five dollar poker online or if it's you twenty five dollar i don't know but whatever it is it doesn't mean much to you that will help you practice these ranges, help you sharpen your game. And then we can start talking about all these other things like statistics and, you know, when to continuation bet, when to re-raise, when to bluff, when not to bluff, polarized ranges versus linear ranges versus all of these things that maybe you know, maybe you don't know. Maybe you haven't studied for a while and you need to brush up again or whatever. These are the types of things that we can discuss in the poker room in Slack. So just another reason to become a member of somebody out there is listening to this and is not already a member. Uh, I'll put a coupon code down there in case you want to sign up. Uh, we're killing esports right now. The, the code esports gets you in for 20 bucks on your first month, and then it gives you that 20% discount for every month after that. And you get all of this stuff. You get, um, if we're talking poker, you get advice there. If you were talking esports, you get advice there. When the sports start coming back online from NASCAR to MMA to whatever, we'll start talking those. We'll start opening that stuff up. 
literally the best value in all of daily fantasy sports. And in this case is if we're going to open up and start talking more and more poker, um, you're going to find me in those rooms a lot because this is probably a bigger passion of mine than even DFS. Um, and I'm probably more experienced here than with DFS. And if you think I'm, if you already like the stuff that I talk about with DFS, then we need to start opening up the poker and start talking poker too, because uh, you'll probably like that even more. Anywho, um, thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Click the like and subscribe button down below. And hopefully we're talking to you guys inside the poker room in our uh, coaching channels inside DFS Army. Peace out.